On the morning of the 4th of August, 1897, a young laborer carrying out demolition work with his fellow workers uncovered the most enigmatic face in Iberian sculpture, the Dama de Elche. A bust carved from limestone between the 5th and 4th centuries BC. The Dama de Elche is the most popular of all the findings made in the area known as al Laucudia, which in Arabic means hillock or hill. La Alcudia is a valuable site and archaeology museum two kilometers from the city of Elche. It encapsulates the traces left by 500 years of life, from the Neolithic to the start of the Islamic period, when the city was abandoned and fell into the obscurity of neglect. The remains of the buildings were used for centuries to harvest materials for construction, especially in the neighboring town of Elche, and the land was covered and transformed for agricultural uses. In the mid-19th century, two brothers, Aureliano and Pedro Ibarra, shed a chink of light on the past of La Alcudia through a series of archaeological digs. Their work was continued through the following decades by Alejandro Ramos Folques and his family, owners of the estate, until, in 1996, the Alcudia University Foundation for Archaeological Research was founded. Ever since, this foundation has been working to promote knowledge about the city known as Iliki that stood strong for hundreds of years. La Alcudia, shining a light on Iliki. La Alcudia, settled 7,000 years ago, was immersed in Iberian culture between the 5th and 2nd centuries BC. The Iberians from La Alcudia were strongly influenced by other Mediterranean cultures with which they maintained relations, such as the Phoenicians, who had settled in Ibiza and in the dunes of Guadamar, and the Greeks, who settled in the Catalan colonies of Ampurias and Rosas, as well as other Iberian settlements. The digs have still to uncover large areas of the city occupied by Alcudia in the Iberian period. However, remains have been found of an adobe building which may have been a temple linked to the deity of the earth and dynastic worship. The Iberian culture produced high-quality sculptures in La Alcudia, including figures of warriors and real and fantastical creatures. These figures had a religious or representative function in association with the local ruling classes in the city. The most outstanding discovery made in La Alcudia, and indeed for the entire Iberian culture, is still the Dama de Elche. Sculpted at the end of the 5th century BC, it remains shrouded in mystery. It looks like a woman, but could also be a man. 
Is it a portrait or the representation of a deity? Was it originally a bust or a full body sculpture? The most widely accepted theory is that it represents a female deity housed in a sacred building in the city and that, to save it from an outside attack, it was carefully hidden in the city wall, which is why it was found in such excellent condition. To the south of Laul Kudia, at the end of the 3rd century BC, an important Carthaginian colony was founded, modern-day Cartagena. On the road that linked the two settlements, the inhabitants of Lalcudia watched soldiers file past, led by the Carthaginian general Hannibal, ready to conquer Rome. And along the same road, but in the other direction, the victorious Roman army arrived to stay. The Iberians of Laucudia accepted their new fate as part of the Roman Empire without confrontation. It was during this time that the name Iliki was first documented in writing, although this name was almost certainly also used for the Iberian city. Iliki was the capital of La Contestania, an Iberian administrative entity which spanned the province of Alicante and part of the provinces of Murcia, Albacete and Valencia. Throughout the second century, ceramic vases were made in La Alcudia with colorful painted decorations strange birds that look like birds of prey, and fantastic quadrupeds reminiscent of felines. There are also representations of real animals and human figures doing battle with monsters or evoking indigenous legends and beliefs. Sometimes the main motif is an isolated head, a symbol of divinity. These vases probably decorated sacred or representational spaces linked to the urban aristocracy. One of the most interesting findings made in La Alcudia is a mosaic which decorated the main room of a private home. The owner must have been familiar with the elegant houses of the central Mediterranean and sought to evoke them with a collaboration of local artisans. In a display of his acceptance of the Roman culture, he even had Iberian names written in Latin letters, although some mistakes were made. Administratively speaking, the Romanization of the city culminated with the founding of the colony Iulia Iliki Augusta around the year 44 and definitively in around the year 27 BC. This represented the city's integration into the circle of privileged cities between Valencia and Carthago Nova and its affiliation to this latter territorial unit. In the surrounding area, ancient Iberian cities were also being turned into Roman municipalities around the same time, such as Lucentum in Alicante and Ilunum in Ain. An inscription, which is embedded into the Elche Town Hall building, is dedicated to Tito Estatilio Tauro, consul to Rome patron of the city and possible founder of Roman Iliki. There is a document in the form of a bronze tabula corresponding to the founding of the colony, which records a division of lands. 
These lands were given to 10 settlers from the south of the Iberian Peninsula, north of Africa, Italy and the Balearic Islands, as a token of gratitude for services provided to Rome. These new arrivals became the new aristocracy of Iliki. Most of the Roman remains visible in La Alcudia can be dated to between the 1st and 3rd centuries. They reveal a city that takes its inspiration from its magnificent southern neighbour, Carthago Nova. Archaeological digs have uncovered the layout used in the houses, distributed around a courtyard with a pond, surrounded by a portico that leads to the rooms. Below ground, there was the sewerage system and lead pipes with pass keys that distributed drinking water either taken from an aqueduct or stored in cisterns. Inside this cistern, a sculpture was found, known as the Venus of Iliki, which is on display at the Archaeology Museum of Elche. The city had two public baths, one at either end of the city. The east baths are in a surprisingly good state of repair, and the Romans of Iliki would come here to bathe in waters at different temperatures and wallow in a pool that has remained largely intact right into the present day. Hardly any traces remain of what was the Roman Forum, the public square where business and trials were conducted. However, there are more evident remains of the wall that once surrounded the city and which was later unable to contain the growing population that spilled out beyond. The Museum of La Alcudia also contains portable objects, adornments related to everyday life and working activities. This silver vanity set must have belonged to a rich lady. It includes a dispenser bottle, a palette to mix cosmetics, a spatula and spoons. Iliki, which became the most important city in the area, was linked to the sea through the Portus Ilicitanos, where Santa Pola stands today. From its waters, the sarcophagus of Proserpina was rescued and is now on display in the Archaeology Museum of Barcelona. Perhaps a prosperous merchant from Iliki sent it to Rome to be sculpted, but the ship that was to bring it back was wrecked just before it reached port. By the mid-third century, the Roman Empire and, therefore, Iliki were experiencing a period of decadence. Public services were deteriorating and the city had lost its former sheen. During this time of crisis, Christianity took hold and by the fourth century, it was already established in Iliki. The remains of a basilica with an apse located to the south of the site, date back to this time.
Inside, we find a multicolored mosaic with the remains of a figurative scene and words written in Greek. The city was rebuilt, reclaiming materials from disused buildings that had once bestowed great splendor upon it in the Roman period. The Visigoths, who came from Central Europe and had officially converted to Christianity, occupied much of Hispania and turned Iliki into an Episcopal see the city where the bishop resided. The bishop was not just the administrator of the church's wealth, but also the representative of the city's civil power. In the sixth century, Romans from the east, Orthodox Christians with a Greek culture, set out to rebuild the empire. They conquered North Africa and part of the Mediterranean coast. Iliki became part of the Byzantine orbit and Greek was once again heard on its streets. With the arrival of the Byzantines, the bishop and his Visigoth following fled to the city of Elo, close to the modern-day Ain. Shortly afterwards, the Visigoth king, Suintila, finally expelled the Byzantines and Iliki once again became the Episcopal See. In the 8th century, taking advantage of the power struggles that were rife between the Visigoths, the Muslim Arabs embarked on their conquest of the peninsula. A Christian Visigoth noble, Teodomiro, agreed to let the Arabs have a certain amount of autonomy in seven cities in exchange for the payment of a series of taxes. Iliki was one of them. But the place where 75 generations of men and women lived did not last long. The Muslims, who called it Ilz, gradually abandoned it in favor of a new city, which inherited its name, albeit in an altered form, Elch. The place occupied by Iliki came to be known as the Hill or Al-Qudiyah in Arabic. 